Hello, St. Joseph Catholic School. This is Mrs. Holly coming to you with some important updates. These are updates that were shared at a meeting on um, Monday, August 17th. And this is just going through that presentation for those who were not able to join us on that meeting. So welcome here online. Um, first of all, I wanted to say what a warm welcome I've received as the new principal of St. Joseph School. I'm honored to be serving this community. There's just a little bit of information about myself just to let you get to know me as far as my accomplishments. I know that um, getting to know me personally will be something if you don't already know me, I look forward to um, sharing myself with you and really developing a relationship so that we can be partners in all of our students' educations. So we started with the state of our school and Mr. Spillman from the parish actually shared this, but I'll go through a little update with you. We are in great shape at St. Joseph School. We were blessed to have an amazing principal, Mrs. Tellis, who brought us in to a financial position where we are completely out of debt and we are really starting out pretty strong. The one place that we really do need work is in our enrollment numbers. We did have um, some families who decided to homeschool and go various directions, some who moved. Our enrollment numbers are low, so if you have someone who would like to come to St. Joseph, please encourage them to contact us and we can walk them through the process. We do still have fundraising on our books for this year. The uh, fundraisers that we will be doing are a readathon that will be at the end of September. There will be a golf tournament on November 30th. It's a Monday. Mark your calendars. There will be a spring fundraiser. We are not sure what that's going to look like quite yet because we want to make sure of what our capabilities are with our current climate in our society. Uh, we will, but we will have something, and then we also will have, of course, our jogathon. If you've been noticing on social media and in newsletters that have gone home every other month, we are also doing a day of giving, which is just a great opportunity for friends, family, supporters to give to St. Joseph School. So we always appreciate your uh, participation and support in our fundraisers. Okay, so the big question, what will the 2020-21 school year look like? As I said at the meeting the other night, we still don't fully know. And as your principal, I will be open and honest with you about anything that comes up, and this is where we're at. What we do know is that school will begin on September 8th, 2020. Preschool will be on campus. Our state has allowed daycare centers to be on campus and preschool qualifies for that. So we know that they will be on campus. There are still a few spots available for some of the preschool days if you know anyone that needs to be on campus for that. TK through sixth grade. We have put in a waiver and we're still waiting for a decision on that. They say that the waiver process takes about two weeks, which would mean that our two weeks would be this coming Tuesday, August 25th for an answer. We are keeping our fingers crossed. Um, I monitor the numbers for Orange County uh, quite a bit throughout the day and um, it's looking good right now. So we're really keeping our fingers crossed that this comes through. Um, distance learning plans are in place by the teachers if we are not allowed back on campus. So please know that we have prepared both ways to be, to be able to service your students and make sure that learning will start on September 8th, no matter what it looks like. Now here's the hard part, seventh and eighth grade, we were devastated when we saw the waiver parameters come out. Seventh and eighth grade are not included on the waiver process. So the reason from what we understand is that most middle schools have higher populations than we do at St. Joseph School. So they did not feel that they could put that out for the general state to apply for. We know we're different here at St. Joseph School. We have small class sizes, but unfortunately we are tied by the state of California on that. In order for seventh and eighth grade to come back, they, we must be off the state of California watch list for 14 days. So we are watching that, monitoring that, counting that down, and hopefully we will get those seventh and eighth graders back on campus as soon as possible. One thing that Father Miguel and I have been working on is we will be doing some faith retreat days with seventh and eighth grade. They won't be educational days, they'll be, but it'll give the students an opportunity to come on campus fellowship together, have a retreat day, have that community feel so that that will be integrated into the distance learning. And then 
we will be back the moment we can as soon as the state of California allows us to. We will not be waiting until the end of the semester or the trimester. We will be back the moment that we can. So looking at our different learning models, uh, in-person learning. We all know, or lots of you know, what it's like to be a student on campus at St. Joseph School, and that certainly is going to continue. All of our teachers are putting up their beautiful boards and getting their classes ready to welcome your students back. However, even though our learning will continue, we do have safety measures in place to ensure that everyone stays safe and healthy while they're here at St. Joseph's. There will be temperature tech temperature checks taken in car line before the students even come into school. The students will not even exit their vehicle before they are um, measured or, or temperature taken. Uh, so that way, if there is someone who has a fever, they will just be taken home by their parent or guardian and we won't even have to bring them out and they won't even um, have any exposure to anyone else. Within the classrooms, desks are placed six feet apart. We have, in order to do this, we have capped all of our class sizes at 20 to make sure that we have plenty of room in our classrooms. We uh, have all the desks facing the same direction as well. We have purchased disinfecting equipment. Um, this is a backpack that has a wand on it where the um, disinfectant can actually be sprayed all over multiple surfaces and then it takes just a couple moments to dry. Great question was brought up at the parent meeting on Monday. They asked about what that actual, what the ingredients were in that disinfectant. And I completely understand that question because I would be concerned about that as well for my children. This is a completely organic solution. We actually purchased a, um, I, I will double check on the name, but I think it's iodizer. Um, but we use vinegar and water and it takes a half hour for the solution to be created with the vinegar and water. And then once that is sprayed on, it does kill all of the germs. We are working on having an additional hand washing station installed in replacing our uh, drinking fountains. So we'll have additional places for hand washing to happen and then we will be utilizing that bottle filler that all you awesome parents put in money to install last year. We will be staggering break and lunch times to make sure that we have smaller amounts of kids outside at one time. Masks will be worn on our campus. Um, we will make sure that students have enough time without the masks so that they have some break time as long as it is safe for them to do so around other students. The masks will not be required to be worn while they're outside running around on the playground but we will be making sure that especially when sitting down in the classrooms and walking around on campus, the masks will be worn. We have uh, purchased plexiglass dividers, trifold dividers for all of the students in the school, so those will be utilized. And then all students will remain in their classrooms for teaching. In previous years, some classes have changed for um, science or Spanish or some of their other subjects, all of those outside teachers will actually be going to the classrooms to minimize cross-contamination of any items. The only one that where they will be going um, away from the classroom is for PE. They'll obviously be going outside. Okay, um, if this in-person learning is not something that you feel comfortable with, even with our safety measures, we wanted to present another option for you. So we have a choice learning program. We call it choice distance learning because it is your choice to put your student in this program. If you have someone at home who is more susceptible to the virus and you want to be extra cautious and keep your student at home and do distance learning with them through St. Joseph Catholic School, we are providing that option for you. So what will my students' learning look like? Lesson streaming for core subjects of math and English language arts. Our aides will be working with our teachers to make sure that those lessons are streamed and your students at home receive those same lessons just as if they were in the classroom. Where that will change a little bit is for your other learning subjects, science, social studies, um, subjects like those, art, all of those, those will be more project-based and those will be facilitated by the aides and by the teachers in the classrooms as well. 
how do I sign up for choice distance learning? You are more than welcome to call me and ask or email me and ask me any questions if you um, are curious about it. However, we do ask that you contact the school office by Friday, August 21st, which is um, coming up very soon, to let us know if you do decide to put your student in distance learning. Our teachers are uh, preparing for all different scenarios and they really do need to know how many will be on distance or choice distance learning in their classrooms. Now the big question is do I need to stay in this model for the entire trimester or year? Although we um, look for consistency within our learning, we understand that there may be certain scenarios where the numbers may change or things may get better or your uh, situation at home may change. So if you do get to a point where it's before the end of the trimester where you do feel like you would like to send your students back, all you have to do is contact me. We will talk through it and we will make a plan for bringing your students back to St. Joseph Catholic School. What we don't want to do is we don't want kids flip flopping between the two different kinds of learning. So if you have any questions about that, please contact me and ask. So then the final one, um, again, this is just something we're preparing for in case our waiver does not come through or in case the numbers do not go down, and that would be a complete distance learning for our students. What I can say is that we have new expectations for our distance learning for this coming school year. Last year when we were doing distance learning, it was the end of the school year and we were just counting down those days until summer and we were trying to make it through. What we know now is that this is a possibly a new reality for us. So we have set some more stringent guidelines. Uh, we will ask that everyone set up individual learning spaces at home for your students. We do not want to see students in their beds, um, lounging on couches, all of that. I know it's very comfortable. However, we need to create an environment where students are going to school. So on that same regard, we are asking that uniform shirts, St. Joseph Catholic School uniform shirts, will be worn by students. We're not asking for the whole entire uniform. Um, as one of my friends said was business on top, comfortable on the bottom. That is totally fine. But we want to create that feeling that your students are going to school. And we feel that includes going to a space that's set up for them and then also putting on their uniform to get into that school frame of mind. So we do have some daily expectations. We believe in balanced technology time. We do not want our students' heads inside of a computer the entire day. So we do believe that we can give lessons, we can give help, we can give guidance, and then there will be some individual time where your students will be working on project-based learning or homework or packets on their own. That is simply because we do not want our students' heads and faces inside a computer the entire day. For younger grades, we will be utilizing packets and we will be working on a system to drop them off and pick them up at your individual houses. We will be, if we go to distance learning, the emphasis will be on core subjects such as math and English arts, English language arts. Um, we, of course, will still have science, we will still have social studies, we will still have all those other subjects. However, the emphasis and the majority of our work is going to be within those two major subject areas. We will be working on a lot of project-based learning to show mastery of subject understanding. We want to make sure that we really see and learn what your student knows so that we can make sure and help them grow to the best of their ability. Okay, so I know a lot of people have questions. Why, if, I, if they can go to a public school or a cheaper school or a home school, why choose St. Joseph Catholic School? So here's our reasons. We did this last year for distance learning and we were very successful at it. Were there things that we could improve? Absolutely. Are there things that we learned? 100%. However, we know that we can continue to build on our success from last year and only make our program that much better. We also know that our schools will eventually open. We are faith-filled people who believe in the power of prayer and we are all praying for it. The moment, as I said before, the moment our schools are able to come back, we have safety measures in place where we can seamlessly come back to our classroom environment here on campus. 
When we do come back, we have guaranteed smaller class sizes. We have capped our class sizes at 20 and we will not go above those. We already have one class, I think it's seventh grade, that's already capped. So if you know anyone in other classes who are looking at a possible change in education, we would love to talk to them. Um, we have limited um, availability in some of the other classes. We are already, as I said before, we're already prepared with the safety measures on campus, so we will have a seamless transition back. We also provide individualized learning. All of our teachers, we are an ideal school through Loyola Marymount University. We are well trained in blended learning, and that means that we have individualized learning programs for your students. We will not have a million students who get lost in the shuffle. Your child will be known, they will be taught, and they will grow. Finally, social emotional. Continuity for your children and your students is of the utmost importance in our society today. I know I have three children of my own and it's hard to see them not back at school, not with their friends, and they're struggling. All of our kids are struggling. If we can provide continuity, and small class sizes so that our students feel like they are part of a community that they connect with, they will succeed. And then last, I said finally before, now finally, faith. And this is always why St. Joseph Catholic School, we incorporate faith into every single aspect of our curriculum, of our learning, and of our culture. Our Lord Jesus Christ is guiding through us through all of us, and we know that we can lend on that and talk freely about that and pray with each other. And that is so incredibly valuable, especially in this climate. I just wanted to add on to the end, we are partners in education. I believe that fully. We put on our part at St. Joseph Catholic School, and I know you pay tuition and good money for us to do it for you, but we also believe that we can only do this if you are partners with us. So we look forward to the year. We look forward to connecting with you and doing everything that we can in order to make sure that your student succeeds. We do have a couple upcoming dates. We have a meet the teacher date scheduled. Right now we um, have only specified that it is for preschool, TKK, and new students on campus. However, our teachers would love to meet anyone else who wants to come in and see their classroom and feel a little bit more comfortable before the first day of school. So we have kept Wednesday, September 2nd from 5 to 7 p.m. open. If you would like to make an appointment, these will be by appointment only. We will make appointments in order for you to come in and see the student's classroom, meet the teacher, take pictures, whatever you want to do so that that first day of school, if you're dropping off in the car line, um, then you'll already have had that experience within the classroom. So again, it is by appointment, but we will be putting those up towards the uh, middle to end of next week to sign up for. We will be having a welcome back parade on Thursday, September 3rd from five to seven. All of us teachers will be out in the parking lot and we will be cheering everyone on and starting off our school year with a bang. I just wanted to remind everyone that we do have an adjusted school calendar. It starts on September 8th, 2020, and it finishes, although we're starting later, we've adjusted dates. The last day of school will be Wednesday, June 16th, 2021. And I do want to point out, there are no more Late Start Thursdays this year. We um, used to have, during Late Start Thursdays, we had lots of kids come in to daycare, which is wonderful. However, we do not have the ability to social distance that many kids in daycare and keep them safe. So we're actually going to be doing our teacher meetings at a different time. So there will be no Late Start Thursdays this year. So if you have any questions or about what I presented, call me, have a conversation with me. I am always here and available for you or send me an email and I'm happy to give you a call back. We did want to close. I want to close in prayer with you. There's a um, Bible verse from Ecclesiastes that really struck a chord in my heart, especially when we're talking about being partners in our child's education. So Ecclesiastes 4.9, two are better off than one for they can help each other succeed. Lord Jesus, we know you teach that teamwork, friendship, and discipleship are important. I pray today that you teach us that we can't do everything alone. Bring us together so that we can be partners together. 
Bless our efforts so that teamwork, friendship, and discipleship produce more together than we could as individuals. We ask this in your name. Amen. St. Joseph, pray for us. Again, reach out to me, 714-528-1794, or email at me at aholly at sjsplacenta.org. I look forward to an exciting and certainly not a dull school year. Thank you all for your support.